This is the Washington Times front page for Wednesday, May 10th, 2023. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. Congressional leaders emerged from a meeting with President Biden unable to break a months-long impasse over raising the debt ceiling. Harris Alec and Jeff Mordock report House Speaker Kevin McCarthy told reporters at the White House that no progress was made in resolving the situation. Both sides said they would meet again on Friday ahead of an expected June 1st deadline for the government to be unable to pay its bills. A federal jury in New York found Donald Trump liable for sexual battery and defamation of writer E. Jean Carroll. Jeff Mordock, Alex Sawyer, and Seth McLaughlin report the verdict is the latest legal blow to the former president. He's also facing felony criminal charges in New York and two federal investigations. Trump was ordered to pay Carroll roughly $5 million in damages, about $2 million for the assault, and about $3 million for defamation. His attorney said they will appeal. The jury cleared Trump of the most severe allegation in the case, that he raped Carol in a dressing room of a Manhattan department store in the mid-1990s. The wave of lawless, often random violence that has swamped America's largest cities in recent years is flooding the streets of the nation's capital. Matt Delaney reports Washington, D.C. residents are on edge, national lawmakers are frustrated, and local leaders are scrambling for answers. The sense of lawlessness, especially among young people, is pervasive. Since January, the district has recorded a 13% increase in robberies, a 43% increase in carjackings, and a 53% increase in sexual assaults from last year. Most alarming is the 12% increase in homicides after D.C. recorded more than 200 killings in 2021 and 2022. It's the first time the city has had such high levels of violence in nearly 20 years. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement has been releasing illegal immigrants from custody to clear space for the expected surge of more migrants at the southern U.S. border with Mexico. Stephen Dynan reports ICE cut its detention population to fewer than 23,000 at the start of the month, down from more than 28,000 six weeks earlier. That includes hundreds of people with criminal records whom ICE has released. Acting ICE Director Tay Johnson told Congress last month he wanted to cut the number to as few as 21,000 to leave plenty of space to accommodate new arrivals. The administration gives up its Title 42 pandemic expulsion power on Thursday. As college commencements near, Sean Salai breaks down who's coming to speak to students and the decline in speakers from conservative backgrounds. None of the nation's eight Ivy League universities has invited a conservative speaker to address graduates this year. Higher education watchers say most undergraduate students and faculty are politically liberal, which explains the pushback. And finally, Guy Taylor and Bill Gertz talk with Taiwan's unofficial ambassador to the United States, Sal B. Kim. Taiwanese-Chinese tensions have increased sharply over the past several years. The Biden administration has sought to play down fears of a conflict, and top officials insist that war is neither imminent nor inevitable. Find all of today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or the Washington Times app, and find us wherever you get your podcasts. Just search Washington Times in your favorite podcast app. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbauer.